other things in her business, right? That doesn't mean she forgets about the pipeline. She still has things she has to do to keep going with the pipeline. But now there's other things that she can start to prioritize to help her get better, to help her build her business faster. Thanks, Amber. Sorry to throw you on the spot, but you know how we roll. I do. I know what I signed up for. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're still letting people in, guys. Um, 66 awesome people. All right. I'm going to shut up for a minute. I'm going to give Walt the mic, and then we're going to go into some Q&A before we do breakout rooms. All right. What do you want me to talk about? Let's talk about I don't Hawaiian know, man. Shirts, the, be the best color patterns for the backgrounds, would, depending on what your Hawaiian shirt pattern is. I'm going to talk about anything. <laughs> I, love I would it. like just... somebody to drop in the chat. I want to I want to answer a burning question, right? I don't care if you're new to real estate, you've been in real estate for 50 years, you're not in real estate, you're in a different business. I want to talk about time management and goals, planning, execution. So, drop something in the chat that we can talk about. I don't want to talk about something that nobody wants to hear. I have two questions then. Perfect. Nelly, what you got? As a listing agent, how are you showing your value while the house is active? What are you doing weekly? Oh, that's a great question. So one, you, you already said it weekly, right? Uh, follow up with them consistently, even if it's just a quick market snapshot. Hey, this is how many showing requests we had. This is how many inquiries I fielded. This is where I put your listing this week for social media marketing. This is how many people clicked on the Facebook marketplace ad that I put together for you. Um, it, we take that stuff for granted. Because we just know like these are the things that real estate agents do. I'm going to list your property, market your property. I'm going to have conversations that don't necessarily pan out into a showing, but I'm going to have conversations about your property. And it's really easy for us to not bother to talk to our client about that because we just, that's just what we do, right? It's so normal to us. We tend to forget that the client really has no idea what we do. So going back, and just giving them a very basic summary. It, it, it'll feel basic to you, but it'll be impactful for your seller client to talk about, you know, literally something as simple as this is how many views and saves you had on Zillow this week. This is how many people pulled up your listing through their email in the MLS this week. This is how many people viewed or clicked on the link in my Facebook marketplace ad that I put together for you. This is how many phone calls or texts that I fielded about your property. All those little things that you do on a regular basis, show that to your clients. Let them know what you're doing for them. Does that help? Yes, it does. Tremendously, it does help. And then I have another question too. Lay it on me. Give me one second. I pulled it up on my notes. Okay, so I asked you. Okay, so what do you say to a for sale by owner after the first initial contact? What are you saying to them to win <laughs> them over against all the other agents? Besides, oh, oh, let me list your house. Besides all that, like, what are you saying? Like, what are you saying in three days? Like, you know, you are speaking my language, Nelly. Email, if they have, if you haven't gotten their email, you haven't gotten, like, you barely got their phone number. But like, yeah. what are you saying? Like, you know, what are you saying to like, like, kind of convince them to sell the house to like yeah. list the house? So, so let me, I love working with FISBOs and landlords for that matter. I teach an entire course on that. That's a great conversation. I got bored on Easter Sunday and engaged 20 different FISBOs on Easter Sunday. That's, that's how much I love working with FISBOs, right? Nobody else would even think to do that. And I showed my buyer a FISBO uh, on Monday after talking to a FISBO on Easter Sunday, right? It's a great conversations you can have. The number one thing you need to understand is the psychology behind the for sale by owner when you reach out to them. Okay, I'm just, this is super, super important. They've only made one firm decision in their mind. I don't want to list with an agent. That's their decision right this moment. And you as a perfect stranger are not going to change their mind. If I called you at random and we had never met and you firmly believed you didn't want to do something, there's no way I'm going to convince you otherwise. It's yours. You you own that decision. And so we have to go into those conversations with the approach of, I know what you're trying to accomplish. I know that you don't want to list with an agent. Let's just take that off the table right from the start. How else can I help you? How else could I add value? So this weekend, I talked to some FISBOs about marketing and how they're, I found their yard sign, but they're not on Zillow. They're not on Facebook Marketplace. Did they know that one third of the entire US population shops on Facebook Marketplace and they can put their house on it for free? Let, let me, I'll walk you through that. Let's talk about photos. 
yours aren't amazing because the lighting's off and this and that. Would you like the number to my professional photographer? You don't have to use me to use her, but she's amazing. That's how I sell houses so fast. I have a great photographer, right? Just right. give them all of your professional knowledge. Offer to market their property in your, if you have private Facebook groups in your community that are real estate focused, like we own a bunch of them in our organization. So I, I can genuinely say like, I can put your house in front of tens of thousands of people that may not even be looking with an agent yet. Would you like me to? Offer all of your professional knowledge, all of your professional value. Don't ever ask to list the house. Just offer to help them and add value because here's why. The statistics do not lie. The vast majority of for sale by owners will list their property with an agent before it's sold. That's a statistical fact. So we don't have to force that conversation early. It needs to be their decision. And when they make that decision, we need to be the only agent that comes to mind because we've been trying to help them. We've added value. We've helped them with marketing and photos and potentially trying to bring buyers to the table. When they make the decision to list, you'll be the only one they reach back out to if You've started the relationship with value and you've followed up consistently to see how it's going for them. Right. And I got a whole, I got, I would spend a whole hour talking about that, but that's the highlights. I hope that's helpful. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Nellie, I'm going to take it a step further. If you can see our <laughs> screen, I'm going to show you something. So, you know, one of the things that I talked about was tools, right? In your toolbox. So one of the things I did early on is I built this template and I'm going to give you guys the template in Canva, by the way, you will have to, uh, do some updates to personalize it and make it your own. But what I do is I build this template in Canva and then I throw it in a digital flip book. <clears throat> and I do two things. I have the full guide, which in this case is 37 pages. And then I break apart the guide based upon its chapters. What I used to do with Fizbo's, <laughs> every time I would see one, I would open the Zillow app, throw the address in Zillow, pull it up, do a screenshot, and then I would text it real time to whoever the owner of the house is. Hey, I just found your house. I pulled it up on Zillow. Can we talk about where you have it priced at? That would always get their attention, right? Because everybody thinks Zillow is God, which we know is not true. But it is a hell of an opener and a great call to action to have a conversation about, a conversation about what Zillow says because nobody else is doing that. So that would open the door. Once the door would be open, have the call, have a conversation. And just like Walt said, I'm not asking him to list. I'm not asking him to see the house. I'm just saying, hey, tell me about the house. What's going on? Where's it's priced at? You know, is it renovated? Is it updated? What's the situation? And then I start sharing this with them. You know, hey, can I send you some things that other for sale by owners have found helpful in my community? Right? And this is my wife's. <clears throat> Hello there, homeowner. We start talking about FSBOs introduce ourselves, guiding questions, right? Three main questions. Do I have the mental fortitude to take on a stressful project? Do I have the computer and technology skills to actually market this? Am I willing to deal personally with buyers who can be quite critical of your home, need to be screened, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But then I literally just, I, I take this guide and I decide how I want to use it and what I want to do. There's pros and cons to consider. We get into home preparation right? Decluttering, create a welcoming entry, fix fencing. We talk about staging. We talk about pricing. We talk about CMA versus an appraisal because a lot of people confuse those. We talk about sold listings, pending listings, active listings for comparison. We talk about photography, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys this template in Canva and you guys can do whatever you want with it, but at least you have some place to start. Because the most important thing, and I'm going to keep pushing this, you guys, is to build your toolbox over time, right? There's no silver bullet in this business. This business requires work and it requires one thing all the time, conversations. Who are you having conversations with on a regular basis? So the more tools that you can build to open and continue conversations, the better off you are. Uh, Amber Lee, we see your hand up. Yeah, so do you think it's beneficial to kind of use the help me help you help me attitude so the reason I'm asking is I've lived in my community since 2015 but I'm a newer agent that's super saturated um my original idea with Fizbo's was to handwrite a letter discussing you know 
some of the things that you guys are bringing up, but also to offer like, this is kind of a, a way to help me get my name out there, but in turn helping you guys at, you know, a very minimal cost kind of idea. So the, you want to go to the Jerry Maguire route, right? Yeah, kind of. I, I just figured that like that might, you know, pull on a little bit of like, okay, she's not wanting 3% commission and to take over the whole deal. She just wants a good review and maybe her name on the MLS kind of thing. Okay. Uh, Anne, I see your hand up. Do you want to take that? Okay. I'm going to give you guys to it's to my idea straight. I've sold hundreds of for sale by owners in my career. First of all, do not lie to them on any level. You have to have the personal strength to be able to directly deal with for sale by owners and not be nervous about what you're doing. And I get the, you know, all of the little sticks that we as agents do. And I'm sorry if my internet's a little slow. I live in the sticks. Um, but um, look, you're not calling them because you want to be their friend. I mean, yeah, we, we have nice people that we work with and we have not nice people, but you're calling them to build a relationship with them. So if things go sideways or they get overwhelmed or they get tired of agents up their behinds, they can make a decision about someone that can truly help them sell their home in the time frame they need for the amount of money they need and move on with their life. And if you are coming to them with all these little sticks and, hey, I might have a buyer and all the BS that agents do, you are going to knock yourself very low on their list of agents that they want to deal with. My take on this is to be very upfront and say, look, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, if you don't sell the home in the time frame you need to, how long do you think you'll be doing this before you start considering hiring an agent? Because I'd love to be on that list for you. And I can help you up to that point. But this is what I do for a living full time. And I love this house. And if you don't get this home sold, I know that I can. Yeah. And be I love kind that, and understand they're being overwhelmed by agents that are calling them with all sorts of BS lies yeah. and um, people that want to buy their home for cash for like 40 cents on the dollar. Because the only people that are attracted to for sale by owners are agents. And let's, let's face it, agents are not skilled in calling for sale by owners. And number two, deal lookers, you know, people that want to find a deal. These people don't want to buy an agent. They don't know what they're doing. I'm going to take advantage of them. And I'm going to try to screw them and talk them into some crap that they don't understand. So just from my point of view, be straight, set the appointment. Hey, look, I'd love to see your home. I'm an expert in your area. I try to see all the homes in the neighborhood. Don't lie to them. Go see the house. Yeah. Give them your ideas. And like, it's like the last agent standing wins. Follow up with them weekly. Act like you give a crap and take care of them. That's it. Yep. Now that's spot on. I actually, I actually start my conversations with Fizbo's these days when I get them on the phone and I see, cause you address the elephant in the room. I say, Hey, listen, I'm sure you're probably getting inundated with calls from a bunch of other schmucks who just want to get your listing. I don't even want to talk about that. That's how I start the conversation and it disarms them immediately so that I can actually have a conversation where I do want to add value. I want to build a relationship. I want to help them in any way that I can. So Anne is a hundred percent right, right? Don't try to, well, I have lots of buyers, but I'm not sure which one will be right for you. Bull crap. Come on. We know what our buyers want. We know the size, the shape, the price, the location. If you have a buyer, by all means, take the buyer to the property, get your commission agreement signed before you do that, protect yourself, but don't tell them you got a bunch of buyers and you're not sure which one it'll be the right fit for until you see it. Just be straight with them. You'll get, you'll get so much farther that way because nobody else is doing that. Yeah, to add one last thing is you never know their situation. 
right? You don't know if they inherited the property. You don't know if they've been living in the property. You don't know if they don't want the property. And even if this property isn't something that you end up getting as a listing, by building the relationship, by bringing them tools, by showing value and shooting straight, you don't know what the future is going to bring. There has been FISBO deals that I have lost that came back years later where they bought multifamily units. They bought and sold a house with us, right? So that opportunity is real. So one of the things you'll always hear us talk about is be your future self now. Build your business for your future self. Stop worrying about the transaction right now, which I know when you need cash, when you need a closing, it's hard to do. But if you keep focusing on the future version of you and your being that person, you're going to serve everybody better, especially yourself. And guys, I just dropped a link to Fizz Bonanza. It's free. It's one of the sources I use for Fizzbos. It's great. If anything, um, it will help you see what's out there, what price points, and the poor job most Fizzbos do it attempting to market their home, right? So it will help you Think about what kind of tools that you could help FISBOs, if that's something you're going after, uh, build better, right? How you can serve them. Okay, it's 934. Do you guys want to do any Q&A before we go into breakout rooms? Do you want to cover any other topics or other questions? Anybody? Can I just ask a question? I just logged on to that, um, the FISBO website. Yeah. link that you just sent us and a few of them say listed 54 years ago listed over for 54 years ago listed over 54 years ago yeah i don't Do you know see what that the, yeah that's happened okay. to me too i don't know what the deal is with that like somebody either okay. input the data wrong or when <laughs> i'm sure all these are coming from an ai scraping tool right like that's the right. world we live in today so yeah my guess is it's just bad just data put the wrong but, date in yeah, okay. it could literally be one digit off and it can be 54 years ago, right? Like it could have been right. yeah. listed over 54 years ago, but new FSBO. So, hmm. so that's yeah, probably all because it's a scraping why it's been tool. on the market so long. That is a perfect opportunity to call them and add value. And think about that conversation. Hey, I just noticed an error on your for sale by owner listing. I just wanted to point that out to you. What do you mm -hmm. mean? Well, it says it's 54 years old, and I'm pretty sure that you're trying to sell it right now, correct? You've just opened the conversation now in a very friendly, engaging, valuable way, right? I'd call the 54-year-old Fizzo all day long. <laughs> I'm going to do it. All right, what else you guys before we go into breakout rooms? Janina? I have a question. So I'm new. I've talked to Walter. I've pretty sure I've watched some of your stuff. Um, I've always worked full time. I'm off for one month. Um, so I am trying to actually create my calendar where I can accomplish a lot more because before I was, you know, corporate world. So I would be kind of doing my, my calendar like five o'clock here an hour here and and so i'm trying to be very productive the next four weeks um for my real estate career so any i, I was i mean i took notes on your stuff which is awesome just kind of guidance i think yeah the mindy if you don't mind like the first place i go is personal like what is your home's family situation right like what does that look like first? Because that has to be managed. Then everything else comes second. So I'll give you an example for me. Um, my, my whole work life has changed since COVID. And now I have this segment that is my production time. And for me, that's 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day, right? So I wake up at 4.30 a.m. <laughs> 4.30 to 5.30 is my time. Air AirPods in, listen to a podcast or audiobook, grab coffee, let the dogs out, maybe do a couple pieces of content, return some Facebook messages on Messenger or Slack or WhatsApp or, you know, all the million messaging programs we all use today. Um, and then 5.30 to 8.30 is life, right? It's um, packing kids' lunches, prepping breakfast, emptying the dishwasher, doing household stuff, whatever, then waking the kids up, getting them ready, feeding them, getting out of the house by 7.30 to go drop everybody off to be, you know, back at home by nine. I drop two to three kids off a, a day. So 
then I have that production time and that's where I need to fit everything in. So my only goal is to make sure I'm focusing on the 20% that gets the 80% of results within that time. Now at 3.30, I'm on my way to go pick up the kids, right? Take them to whatever, soccer, dance, gymnastics, back home, get everybody settled, get everybody fed, bathed, and then go through the night. But I know what tasks that I can do at what time. So for me, like I write a newsletter every week as an example. It takes me an hour to write it on average and then an hour to distribute it. I'm uploading it, formatting an email, sending it out, putting it on my website as a blog, and then putting it on LinkedIn as its own newsletter. So that's two hours a week just to do that. So usually I end up writing my newsletter at gymnastics on Sundays, just on my phone. Then on Tuesday evenings, I'll format it, upload it to all of the platforms, and then schedule it to go out at Wednesday the next morning. So the reason I'm telling you all of that is because when you start organizing your life into priorities, into those buckets, then you know what you're left with. So my first question is, what are you left with? Like, what is your production time? Is it five to seven at night? Is it 10 a.m. to 12 p.m.? Like, what is that for you? That would be my first question. And then from there, you can assign tasks that are going to be the 80-20 rule. Okay. Is that helpful at all? Yeah, yeah. it's... It's um for me, like my kids are older, so they're, you know, college and high school. And I, so my whole day is pretty much open right now where before it was not that way because I was corporate. So, um, so now it's like, I feel like I, there's a lot of shiny little objects and I'm trying to, you know, pull in what is going to be the most bang for my buck and the most value. Like I'm working on my website and getting that launched and a few other things and really trying to focus on a lot of content and content creation because I've fallen off on that. So, so um, it becomes the same principle because otherwise you're just going to run around chasing the shiny objects, right? So um, if you look at your day, give yourself hours, right? So I'm I'm a believer that the bigger the desk, the more shit you're going to put on it right? <laughs> so you want to minimize your desk. You want to make it smaller. So that doesn't mean you have to shrink your desk so that you can't fit in all this stuff. But what you can do is this is where time blocking or focus blocks come in is you're like, okay, I want to do more content creation. Great. Set aside one hour a day for content creation. Okay. I want to work on my website. Great. Set aside 30 minutes a day or one hour a day to work on your website. Now that's two hours a day. So going back to the original question, and now I'm asking you, how many hours a day do you want to work? Six? You do about six. Okay, six so let's call it six. Eight. So if you have six hours a day and you're an active agent, like you want to do transactions right now, okay. If you have six hours a day, your first priority is lead gen. So I would say, okay, two hours a day, 33% of your time, focus on lead gen. Then you can build in an hour for content, which I count as lead gen because you're trying to initiate conversations, get people engaged, get people to raise their hands. Then you could take another hour and say, okay, that's going to be where I work on my business. What does that mean? It could be systems. It could be website. It could be creating email templates, right? That type of thing. So now you have two hours left. Those could be calls, text messages. It could be follow-ups. It could be outreach. It could be showing a home. It could be going to a listing appointment. Right. If you just scheduled your day every day like that, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out here's my box and how can I repeat this as much as possible so I can be as consistent as possible. But all that matters is you're doing the things that are moving your business forward. And it's different for each of us, depending upon what we're trying to do. That helps a lot. Thinking about the boxes and my time, because other than that, I get so scatterbrained, like trying to fit everything into, I've got to have it done this week instead of prioritizing, I guess. So so I wrote a newsletter yesterday, which I'm going to drop here for you. And I'm going to ask you to read it today. It'll take you less than five minutes. This will help reframe your mindset. It's called the 100% theory. Okay, Because this is exactly what we're talking about right here is that we put these false pretenses that it all has to be done now. Grab that link in the chat and it doesn't have to be done now. And when you back up and you give yourself more runway, you reduce stress and you increase clarity and a confused mind won't make a decision, which is why everybody's running around going, what the hell am I doing? Right? So when COVID happened and I had to rebuild, 
I made products for 30 years, 450 different products over 12 different vertical markets while being a real estate investor on the side. Okay. When COVID happened, I just launched a brand new patented paint product, $100 million contract. It went away overnight, literally. Mm -hmm. So I backed up and said, okay, in my next 10 years, what am I building? I wanted to get out of the physical product business and I wanted something I could just bolt on. So I'm like, oh, real estate. Why? Because I can just add doors as I build a portfolio. So now I'm building a 5,000 unit portfolio over the next now eight years, but I'm not focused on, I need 5,000 units now. It's, hey, can I add a couple hundred here, a couple hundred there, 50 here, right? And I, my horizon lifted and that took away the stress of feeling like, oh my God, I got to get this done now. So it's the same for everybody else, right? It doesn't matter how grand or not grand your goals are or what you're trying to achieve. If you're just trying to do 12 transactions a year, great, that's one a month. How many people do I need to talk to? A hundred to get one based on 1% rule. Okay, that's 25 a week, that's five a day. That is very manageable to talk to five people a day. Now they, you want them to be the right people, but that's part of the process is figuring that out, right? Well, anything to add? To all of that, I know I just rambled on for like 10 No, years. that was great. And I think Mindy and I, we're going to chat tomorrow a little bit too. So we'll dive a little bit deeper on that. I was just looking at the chat. Somebody had posted in the chat, uh, what is the best lead gen for those stuck in an eight to five uh, work situation with people in the off hours reaching out? People say, buy leads, don't buy leads, go to events, have a website, yada, yada, yada. So I was just dropping a little bit uh, in the chat too. So for anybody who's having that thought of, well, do I buy leads? Do I don't buy leads? That's really easy. Do not buy leads. Let me say that one more time for everyone to hear. Pull up, pull up your ear. Do not buy leads. I've never bought a lead a day in my life. I did just fine. Don't buy leads. Um, we're here to build relationships, right? That's the core of this entire industry. Yeah, It's not about the house. It's not about the deal. It's not about the closing. It's about the relationship that we get to service when they're ready with a transaction. So then you simply have to break down, how do I like to create relationships? Do I want to build a YouTube channel where people reach out to me because I'm an educator and I like to be on the screen giving away knowledge and breaking things down? If so, great. That, that'll work for you. If you're not that kind of person, don't waste time learning how to build a YouTube channel. Don't waste time building things that you'll never execute on. So you might be a very conversational person and things like FISBOs, landlords, estate attorneys, CPAs, financial advisors, those are going to be great phone calls that you can have to build relationships. You might not be a great conversationalist. You know, the idea of being on the phone scares the dickens out of you. Great. Don't do it. Figure out what your hobbies are. Figure out what your passions are. Figure out how you like to operate and then build your business around those things, right? If you're an in-person kind of, of gal or guy and you just, I, I, I could live without a phone, right? I just want to go get face-to-face -face with people. Think about things like hosting a community event in your, in your local market hosting a volunteer opportunity for whatever passion you care about. And then you market that opportunity for other people to join you in that endeavor. And that's how you'll build relationships with people that are like-minded. They will immediately understand you. They will like you. And then it's all back to follow up. I built the relationship through a very, very valuable thing with me and these people that we shared that passion. We shared that value proposition. And now I'm just going to follow up with them regularly to see how they're doing, not to sell them anything, just to touch base, to see how they're doing. How's the family? Happy Easter. Hope you had a great weekend. What are you doing this Friday? When they hear the word real estate, you will be the only name on their mind. That part will take care of itself after you build the relationships your way, right? The, the, the title of, of Ray and I's second book is called Prospecting for Your Personality Type. It's literally what we're talking about right here, right? Every single agent is a human being first. And every single human being has different things that make them tick. Some have different communication styles. Some have some are more introverted, extroverted. Some are more entertaining. Some are more professional, educational. Some are very outgoing and bubbly. Some are very quiet and reserved, right? And this is not a one size fits all thing. We have to build our business based on who we are, what we want to do, the things that we will bring the right energy into. Right. You've all had this happen. I guarantee you every single person on this call has had this happen to them. Somebody cold called you, probably if you're in real estate, it was to sell you insurance. Right. And immediately you're like, they do not want to be doing what they're doing. I can feel it. They do not want to be calling me, but they're trying to collect a paycheck. Don't be that person. 
And the easiest way to not be that person, to, to bring the right energy into your conversations is to enjoy what you're doing and how you're doing it. And so there's a whole lot more that we could dive into that, but the nuts and bolts of that is don't pay for leads, just go build relationships the way that you want to. Yeah, guys, I just dropped a um, one of my newsletters that's called Be Event Centric. And Terry commented on it. She knows I'm always on her to go do events. But here's the thing. If you take off the transaction, or like our job is to be an event planner, right? Open houses, listing presentations, getting people together. I will tell you, because I've done this many times, it is so easy to bring people together, okay? Go to your favorite coffee shop, your favorite wine bar, your favorite mom and pop restaurant, talk to the owner, introduce yourself, Tell them you want to do a wellness clinic, right? What can you work out for 25 people? Okay. See what you can work out. Then go find a chiropractor, find a nutritionist, find a doctor, can be a holistic doctor, can be an MD, whoever you want, and let them know what you're doing. Hi, I'm Ray. I'm doing a wellness clinic. I'm doing it at my friend Sophia's restaurant. This is what we put together. We got a flat fee for a headcount. Three of us go in right? I'm going to go with Joe. I'm going to go with Walt. I'm going to go with Sarah. <clears throat> if all of us chip in 150 bucks, we can cover the cost. And here's the deal. I'll plan the event. I'll take care of all the arrangements. You guys join me. We're going to do 30 minutes of networking. Each of you gets 20 minutes to present 30 minute wrap up. We're done. Everybody gets the leads. It's win-win for everybody. Yep. Nobody else is asking these people to participate in the community right? Your community is a gold mine if you show up and actually serve and add value by doing the work nobody else is doing. And guys, it's not hard work. Like you're going to do the work anyway. So send a few emails, make the phone calls. And it's very simple to get people to raise their hand. Yeah. But any of us can go into our community Facebook groups. And I promise you, there's a insurance Facebook group, William. <laughs> there is a yoga Facebook group. There is a chiropractic Facebook group. There is a financial planner Facebook group. There is a nutrition Facebook group. There is a wellness Facebook group. All of that stuff exists. Just go find people who want to participate. It's really simple. You can go to all of those groups today, but hey, looking for somebody to join me in an event I'm hosting. Yeah. Who's interested? I'll give a tangible example of what he's talking about right now. So in the word of mouth Keystone Heights, Facebook group. Uh, this was back in 2023. I posted, hi neighbors, little hand emoji, who here owns a business? Let's connect. 53 comments in 48 hours from all of my other local small business owners in my community that I just didn't know yet. Every single one of those relationships is referral business for you and from you to the business owner. And it serves your clients and their clients better when you make those connections. This is easy stuff that we're talking about. I Just will show you get guys out a real start example. Out, start focusing outwardly on other people and how you serve them and everything else will fall in line. I'm going to show you guys a real example with hundreds of comments. Just so you can see how this works. And this was like, this one's almost a year old. This is it. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Hey, yep. neighbors, exclamation point, space, smiley face emoji, who here owns a business? 178 comments. Here's the beautiful part about this. Okay. <clears throat> Number one, I tested this for two years. Okay. I have never, ever gotten kicked out of a group. I've never, ever gotten flagged, and I've never, ever been messaged by admins. It's very benign, but what it does not only does it get people to raise your hand so you can see what's happening, who's in your community, it literally creates many networking events, right? Hey, Liz, artists, muralists, refinishers, beautiful work, message you. I would love a mural, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the replies keep going. Sent you my number in a PM. Thank you. This happens. Think about the value you're adding to groups, right? These admins, a lot of them are agents, by the way, okay? They will not, not all of them will actually publish your post, but you can go and look up the admins and see if they're in real estate or not. 
but most of them aren't paying attention. So the beautiful part is about these groups, regardless if they're owned by a realtor, a lender, an insurance agent, it doesn't matter. Just go add value. Like this added so much value. And just based off this post, I was able to add about a hundred people to my database that went into my world for my newsletter. I met people who own restaurants. I met people who owned other local businesses. I met health professionals, wellness professionals. It just goes on and on. All we gotta do is this work. But sometimes the work feels like we're not doing anything. Like that okay. is one of the exhausting parts, yes. Sorry, didn't 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 mean to interrupt. Um, if you start a Facebook group, how, Vanessa Crow or Vanessa MC. Sorry, um, how how do you promote the group, or how do you, um, because I've seen you know the various area groups, but they're all really small, like 20, 30 people. So I'm just wondering how I would promote that and get uh, get the word out that there is that group for whatever area. Yeah. So a couple things. I don't post that in any group less than two thousand people. Otherwise, your the results are very poor. So 2000 and up is what I look for when I'm joining community groups. Um, if you have a group and you want to promote it, you need to offer mm -hmm. something of value. So Janina, I know you, right? Um, you love travel. You love exploring. You've also been a lot of places. So if, if you had a travel group, what I would do is open a Google Doc or sheet of paper, whiteboard, whatever you want to use, make a list of all the places you've been, then gather three awesome pictures that you have from every place you've been. And I would just start posting every day. In today's post, we're traveling to Italy, blah, 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 blah. In today's post, we're going to uh, France. In today's post, we're going to Guatemala and just post those three pics. And then what you can do, you can either write something or you can use chat GPT and use AI to write five interesting facts about Florence, Italy, five interesting facts about uh, Positano, Italy, like whatever it may be, right? And leverage that. So and start here, about interest as opposed to like my my local neighborhood or something like that. Yeah, but here's what you got to remember. So two things on Facebook groups. Number one, if you own a Facebook group and it says facebook.com slash uh, group slash a number, you need to change that number and you can change it in the group settings so that it's the name of the group. Before you do that, the name of your group should be what people are searching for. So you can do a test. If you go wow. to facebook.com slash groups, I also would do it on TikTok, YouTube, or Instagram, and just type Florence, Italy, right? Monaco, France, wherever it is, start typing. Those keywords and those key phrases will tell you what people are searching for. Same with Google. That's what you want to name your group. Because then to answer your question about how to uh, promote your group, we're not trying to promote it. We're trying to attract people to our group. So number one is how we name it. Number two is make sure it's visible. It needs to be visible based on the name being the actual URL that people are searching for. Okay. Then you gain visibility by publishing every day or twice a day or three times a day. But start somewhere small. Start once a day. And the great thing is like you could batch that content. You could do a month's worth of content easily, probably in three to four hours, let's say using chat GPT and pictures that you have and just start publishing on a regular basis, right? So create a folder in your Google Drive called Facebook Posts, April, 2024, day one through however many days there are in April, fill those folders up and just copy and post. That's it. Would I want to make it more specific, like for the Toronto area, like, you know, travel Toronto or whatever, something like that, or just make it very open? You, you can, you can also mix it, right? You can, these are the places that I've been to, and these are the places in my community. And every other day, change it up, right? There's no crystal ball. The only way you're going to know is by doing, and then you're going to see what people right. resonate with and how people engage and all that kind of good stuff, right? But then... What you can do is make sure on your profile that you have that group as a link, like, hey, I'm Janina, I'm a realtor in this area, but I also run this travel group, right? Oh, okay. And then you go to other groups of like interests, whatever they may be, hiking, canoeing, painting, oh. underwater basket weaving, right? And then just engage in those groups and post in those groups. 
And people yeah. by default are going to be like, who is this person? They're going to go see what's actually happening with you. And then they may click on your group and they may join your group. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Chris said here, he's managed over face, uh, 50 Facebook groups, starting them as easy as growing them as easy. Facebook will promote groups that have engagement. Yep, yep. 100%. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna shut up. Walt, how do we wrap this up, man? Uh, I'd like, we got two minutes, so I'd like to just remind everybody, uh, feel free to drop your content info in the chat. And if you don't know how to save the chat log yet, um, when you're in the little chat box, there's those three dots. If you click on the little three dots, there's going to be a save chat button that will take everything that's been put into the chat log so far since you joined. It will save it as a as, as a notepad document on your computer. So you can go back and reference anything that was said in the chat. You can look through and say, oh, I didn't realize that that person said they were over in that market. I would love to talk to them. Right. Use that opportunity to network with each other. Um, reach out, engage with people if you need to. That's what the uh, that's why we try to blow up the chat so everybody has something to to have when they're done with the call. Uh, and you might you might realize as you're looking through that chat log that oh somebody said they did this thing and I've been actually looking for a partner that does that thing. Um, reach out to them, give them a shout, shoot them a text message, say hey I was on the coffee with you today. Do you want to schedule a time to chat? And then Rage, for those that are a little less tech savvy, Ray just dropped the, the link right there. So everything that's in the chat so far, just click on the button, Ray just dropped, and you'll be able to save it. And you can download it. And then guys, uh, just this morning, Walt, Debbie, and I decided we're going to do an open house on Saturday morning sometime. So we're going to post that event inside the Facebook group and our profiles, and we're actually going to create an event. There will be a Zoom registration for it. And it, we're, it's literally going to be an open house. We're going to talk about NAR. We're going to talk about brokerages. We're going to talk about lead gen. We're going to talk about the market that we're in right now. So whoever wants to join us, um, sign up, show up, share, and then we'll also record it so it's in the group. Can you um, and you, that the off? replay will be available. Can you repeat what you're going to be doing? I'm sorry, Ray. Just real quickly, you said you're going to... Yeah. So we just decided we're going to do an open house and talk about all sorts of stuff in the real estate world. We're going to talk about NAR. We're going to talk about brokerages. We're going to talk about the market, a bunch of different stuff. Just an open Q&A, essentially. Yeah. And uh, we'll get an email out too to everybody on our email list. Yep, yep. All right. Did everybody learn something today? I'm sorry we didn't get to breakout rooms, but anytime I tend to take the mic, we never make it to breakout rooms. So sorry for that. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks hopefully for being it was a good conversation co and everybody got to take something away from it. That's always the goal is to add value. Yeah, 100 percent. And message any of us directly. If you have questions, if you need guidance, if you need resources, just don't be shy. OK, that's all we ask. We want to we never want to be the bottleneck in your business. Like our goal is to help everybody make progress. Yep. yep. Can I just go back to my other question? Because I was writing it down. The in value agent what are you doing during the week i have um doing market updates basic summary the zillow clicks the reverse email prospect and website clicks besides that what else did you say or what else would you recommend well you want to take that oh yeah sorry i was waiting for you to chat so uh i don't know that i would necessarily add anything else until you've got the systems and processes down for the things you're doing. Here's what, here's what most agents uh, do, do wrong, uh, do poorly. Wrong is not the right word. They try to do too many things at once and they don't do anything well, or they don't do anything consistently. And consistency in this business is really where the magic happens. So I would say pick two to three things that you feel like make sense to you. They align with what you're trying to accomplish and really put some time and energy behind consistently executing those two to three things. And then if after a month or two, you feel like you still have more time available and, and you're, you, you could add in something else, then let's talk about adding in something else. But don't try to do too many things at once or you will actually not be consistent and that will hurt your business. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. And guys, give yourself the runway. Like that's why I run 90 day cycles with everything. Cause the first 30 days, you're usually trying to figure out what you're doing. The second 30 days, which gets you to 60 is you're kind of figuring out what you're doing and starting to implement. You may or may not see any results, but by the end of 90 days, you're going to know whether something is a resonating with you. Do you actually want to show up and do it or B is it actually working? Right. And you need time for the results to bake. It's no different than putting a cake in the oven, right? You don't put it in the oven and it's done. You got to give it a minute. 
Same thing with everything that we're doing here in this business. Yep. All right, guys. Have an amazing day. Thanks for everybody that stayed here with us. Have a good one, guys.